So hey, what's going on everybody? Josh Cantwell here, CEO at Strategic Real Estate Coach and Freeland Ventures. Welcome back to another episode of the Strategic Real Estate Coach podcast. And uh, thanks for joining me. I am uh, really excited. This is we're actually recording this on an early Monday morning. I just got out of the gym, had breakfast at my favorite deli, hung out with my wife. This is actually my first kind of real piece of work today. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm hanging out with my good friend and uh, one, of our, one of our really successful students, Joe Greaves. Uh, Joe is from Missouri, and uh, Joe is a relatively still relatively new student with us, been with us for about two or two and a half years. And I remember, Joe might not know this, but I know Joe's first purchase within our organization when he found us was the flip system. It was a, a, a digital book that I wrote. And Joe was actually referred to us by another affiliate. Joe was referred to us by Patrick Riddle. And Joe bought the flip system book and our training program and has ascended all the way up through all of our different trainings and coaching. We've developed an amazing relationship with Joe. Uh, and Joe has recently, about two years ago, quit his job uh, in, in big commercial construction and uh, has been a full-time real estate investor ever since. And uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about Joe's story, uh, his, his story and what he's, what he's looking at for the future. Uh, and Joe also was our third place 2018 investor of the year, which is really exciting. Uh, Joe flipped a bunch of properties during his year long uh, coaching experience with us. Uh, and Joe won a Rolex watch. I don't know, you wearing it? Hey, he's wearing it. Fantastic. <laughs> so Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. How are you this morning? Doing good, thanks for the call. Absolutely, Joe. So let's jump in real quick, just kind of uh, maybe fill in the blanks of what I've left out about your background. Give us the one to two minute sort of bio about Joe Greaves. Yeah, it's really pretty simple, Josh. Um, I had always had uh, some vision of real estate, uh, being in the commercial business for 35 years, uh, building some really big stuff. And I was always uh, interested in how the developers were always leveraging their, uh, you know, their assets and their money and actually leveraging our expertise to build their properties. And these guys were, um, you know, some some guys were really, really great guys and, and are still mentors. One is uh, one of our private money, uh, private money partners um, and others I emulated that I didn't want to emulate. And I just decided that, you know, that if uh, these guys, you know, can have that kind of wealth and to build that kind of wealth through real estate that I might as well try to join in. I was I was killing myself what I thought was doing the right thing and doing a good job and building projects for them. And we got paid, you know, for that one service, but these guys kept getting paid and they get paid over and over and over and over. And, um, I just wanted some of the love. Yeah. Nice. That sounds good. So Joe, when you say big commercial construction projects, give our audience just a little bit of a taste, like what, what what's a, you know, you have to tell us a specific address, but give us an idea of some of the projects you worked on. And yeah, was, I built uh, built a hundred and seventy one Walmart and Sam's clubs. Uh, built uh, three uh, multi hundred unit apartment complex. Built some nursing homes. Built some churches. Uh, several warehouse and distribution centers. Uh, and the biggest project uh, that I completed. Um, when I actually completed that project and then quit to um, pursue uh, this business was a $60 million facility for TransWest Trucks in, uh, in Denver. Wow. So were you traveling a lot? Obviously, you don't build 171 Walmarts and, uh, and Sam's Clubs in the same community. So you had yeah. to be traveling all over the place, right? I did. I traveled. I left on a Monday and came back on a Thursday, uh, worked all day Friday, most of the day on Saturday tried to, um, you know, tried to have a little bit of a life on Sunday and repeated it on a Monday. Got it. Wow. I did that for 35 years. It was a grind. <laughs> it sounds like a grind, buddy. It sounds like a grind. So, um, so Joe, let's, let's pivot then into your current real estate business. 
Um, you got jumped, you know, you said you quit your job. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Jumped in to real estate full time. Uh, give us an idea of what you're focused on today. Are you focused on, you know, I, I know, but tell our audience, you know, rehabbing, wholesaling, uh, cash flow, rentals, uh, assisted living. Tell us what you're up to today. What's your favorite thing to work on? Uh, currently, we have uh, three remodels in process. Uh, we have two single family homes under contract in due diligence. Uh, we just completed two projects and they're listed on the MLS. Um, one project uh, had a third look uh, over the over the weekend. So it's on the 13th fairway of the country club. So it's pretty cool. Um, we, uh, we just closed uh, 18 duplex deals, uh, which was really kind of an exciting off-market uh, purchase. Um, we, we did that uh, with, uh, with a private uh, money partner who um, put in our downstroke. We secured the financing, put management in place. We've renovated uh, nine of those units. Uh, so uh, nine are occupied. Uh, nine are renovated. Three of those renovated nine have just been leased, so at least that thing's cash flowing now. Um, and then uh, the big the big vision for the future is to continue to build that passive portfolio. Uh, and our big, big project is uh, uh, actually thanks to you and in introducing us to uh, a residential assisted living at our Masterminds event. I'm, I am all in with this RAL, so we're gonna bust the RAL vision. We have a property that's under contract uh, that has 24 existing apartment units on it that will convert to independent living. And then in the state of Missouri allows us to build 12, 12 bed homes. So we'll, um, that's, uh, we're in the due diligence part of that now. And, you know, just going through the zoning and, you know, all the regulation uh, assets, it's a totally different nut and, um, you know, but at the end of the day, um, that's, I mean, that's where we can really not only impact our business, but we can also impact lives out there and give seniors just a really cool place to live. And, uh, this property is about five minutes from my, my house. So nice. easy to look at. Nice. And I imagine there's massive deer there as well, somewhere around you hunt in your backyard or where do you hunt? I see that massive pop behind you that's beautiful. yeah you know he he was kind of being a guy and thinking with his nose and not thinking with his head and kind of got in the way of a 30 round but yeah. um yeah well this is the just to finish the opening uh, opening weekend of the firearm season here in missouri i uh, had a great uh you know great weekend with uh, son drew it was his first time back able to hunt uh he had gone away to college and went away to law school and I don't know. He couldn't seem to find any time to get away when he was being a lawyer, but um, passed the bar. And so it was his first time for him to go out and he, he harvested a nice one the other day. So that, that was fun. Had several opportunities to, uh, to shoot, decided not to. And we just, I mean, I saw him, I just didn't, I just wasn't able to put the bead on him. So he's out there and yeah. And since I don't lose very well, uh, you know, we've got, we still got some time to hunt. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You know, a lot of guys, Joe, you, you know, that were in our mastermind, you know, our sort of ideal student to work with is in that, you know, 40 to 45 year old on the low end, you know, probably 70 on the high end, you know, really family type of people, you know, parents and grandparents, kids and grandkids and, families that they really care for uh you know spending that kind of time you're talking about with your son and like me coaching my kids my kids are a little bit younger but that's really what it's all about and a lot of times when people jump into real estate doing what they want to do as a real estate entrepreneur has a lot to do with lifestyle right our number one when i really look at guys like you and uh, mike neal and mark carmona mike cantrell cheryl stewart you know, Louis de la Cruz, a lot of people in our mastermind, it seems like, you know, they're not in real estate for, you know, to be worth a billion dollars and drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis. They're into it because they want the time freedom to spend and do the kind of things you're talking about, you know, uh, you know, hunting with your kids or just enjoying 
the free time. You know, Joe is a very, very uh, amazing athlete, done a number of Ironmans. We'll talk about that. Time to train, trying to really take care of yourself. So let's back up for a minute for you. Talk about the past for a second, Joe. Like, when did you catch the real estate bug? And really, why were you interested in it? Was it passive income? Was it free time? What was it that kind of thought, like, man, this life I'm living is, maybe the income is great, but the time is not. You know, maybe there's something missing. What were you pursuing? What were you either running running towards or running away from when you caught the real estate bug? I don't know that uh, I was, the only thing I guess I was really running away from was I just so hated going to work. And um, I, I won't bore you with the drama, but I just, I can't even tell you about how bad I hated the traffic. I hated getting on the airplanes and going and coming. And it was, I mean, it was a good, I mean, it was a good living. It was, you know, it, I was paid well for doing what I did. And I was marginally good at what I did. I just hated doing it. Yeah. Um, and I, I had mentioned I have uh, a colleague that's become a, a friend and as well as a business associate. Um, he, 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 you know, he has a, a home in Jacksonville, Florida, and he has a home in Vail, and he travels all the time, and he's a real estate guy. And um, he's built his team. His team is very successful. I am still part of that team. I construction manage some of his projects. Um, but I wanted that lifestyle. I wanted to be able to, you know, get out of bed and go to the gym and get on my bike and train and then, you know, take vacations and travel and hang out with the boys and, and, um, you know, and, and, you know, we're just kind of looking for uh, that passive income that gives us a freedom of a lifestyle. And, um, you know, I, I, through the training, I've learned about uh, self-directed IRA accounts and how to invest, how to invest in our own projects and invest in passive income properties, which, you know, uh, Edward Jones cannot deliver what a solo IRA account or solo Roth account in our case, solo Roth account can deliver. And, you know, we just learned that through the training and the, the, the more that we learn, the more I want to learn. And we started with a, with a team of one and now we have a team of over a hundred and uh, we just put on um, uh, uh, an acquisitions uh, manager. So I fulfilled one of the challenges you gave me at, at our, at our Cleveland event. And, um, uh, and then uh, the next move is to put on a project manager so I don't have to deal with the construction stuff that will allow us to really focus on uh, our RAL business. Nice. Nice. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, obviously income was nice income, but kind of really just pursuing the lifestyle, the time freedom uh, to travel and enjoy training and those kind of things. So Joe, what is, what does the future look like for you? You've, you quit a 35 year career in commercial construction to do your own thing, build your own business as a real estate entrepreneur. You've had a, a, a lot of success out of the gate. It's probably not nearly what you want, where you want to be because you have big goals and want to accomplish a lot of things. So what does the next three to five years look like for you? What, what are you trying to accomplish there with real estate? Well, we're going to continue to build our, uh, our, uh, our, um, I call it redevelopment business because I just think it sounds more professional than flipping. Um, we are flippers. It is who we are. It is what we do. But when we're standing at the country club, you say, oh, I you know, raise private capital for our real estate developments. Oh, well, really? What do you do? Well, you know, we're a residential, commercial, and multifamily redevelopers, and we utilize private in private. Uh, capital from individuals just like you and we invested in our real estate projects and when Kyle says well how's that going you say it's going great I mean that's really true that's really how that happens yeah. um, so we're going to continue to raise private capital with our RAL business you know we need to raise about three million dollars um, uh, we you know we do a lot of our uh, our single family properties uh, with the conventional bank financing uh, we have our first uh, our first property uh, underway with uh, the Freeland Fund, and um, uh, so we're you know I think that we'll do twelve to fifteen uh, residential um, redevelopments 
uh, this year, we'll purchase another 25 or 30 multifamily doors. Uh, and uh, hopefully this time a year from now, uh, we'll have our CON in place for three residential assisted livings. That'll take us up through the next 24 months. And then we're gonna grow that residential assisted living to other markets within a couple hours east-west of, of Columbia, Missouri. We're, we're located um, uh, kind of in a stretch. We can go down through Springfield. Um, I think we'll over uh, overlook St. Louis because there's quite a bit of competition there. Uh, go up through central Illinois where they really don't know anything about residential assisted living. And we just need to get there before somebody else does. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, man. That's really what it's all about, right? Passive income, mailbox money to pay the bills, build your lifestyle, and then be able to do the things you'd like to do traveling, whether it's the beach, whether it's the woods. I mean, that's, that's really where it's at. Um, Joe, so when you left the commercial construction, you have really an amazing story of kind of leaving, walking away from this former job. And, uh, so why don't you just tell our audience a little bit more about that? Like, what were you doing? What was on your mind? And when did you finally pull the trigger to say, I'm out, I wanna do this full time? Yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy. Um, I completed a really big project. We completed it um, uh, four months ahead of schedule. Um, through that process, um, I had a contracts administrator and I had a really, really good building superintendent. And we really uh, merged well together. Uh, my, uh, my former employer had promised, uh, uh, you know, a very nice bonus if we delivered the project, um, you know, 70, 80, 90 hour week deals, um, um, because I was all in, you know, that was the commitment that I had, I had given that client and what I'd given my employer. And I, I, I you know, I didn't do it myself, but, um, my contracts administrator really wasn't very good. So we eliminated him. Uh, and we just thought, Holy crow, that's an extra 40,000. It's going to go into our kitty. Well, it didn't. And, um, so I continued to, uh, work with, uh, with, you know, with that builder for, uh, oh, several months and, you know, kind of suggested that he kind of need to make, not make right with that handshake that we, we did. Yeah. Uh, it just didn't happen. Didn't really appear was going to happen. And, um, I was tired of traveling back and forth. Uh, Barbara was here and we were going back and forth every other weekend. And it was just really a grind and two homes and two livings and, it just decided it was just too much of a grind. So I decided that I would make that decision really simple. Right. So I just said, I'll box up my computer, my cell phone, my files. I'll, I will send them to you. Uh, I promise that I will not pursue any of our clients. If I can ever be of assistance, I'd like to do that, but I'm done. And uh, I was told, well, you can't do that because you've got, you know, multi millions of dollars worth of construction going on I said yes sir I do but you know um, you made me a promise and that didn't get kept so I'm gonna keep mine I'm done um, I still have a relationship with those guys so I guess if you know time blows up and I got to go back to work I don't know it might happen but we're hoping that the mailbox will keep us from having to go back to work yeah, right. that's right so I uh, I'll just finish that story just a little bit so I said, okay, I'm done. And I went in, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, made a cocktail, put my feet up on the desk. Barbara comes home from work and she goes, what's wrong? And I said, well, uh, I just quit my job. She goes, you just quit your job. Yeah. She said, well, good. Maybe now you can do something you want to do. Oh, She's, good for her. She said, I don't care what you do. I just want you to want to get out of bed and go to work. Yeah. And so now we get out of bed, go to the gym, come to work. Mondays, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I try to spend uh, here in the office. Mondays is always a PJ day, uh, except for today. I've got, got on my nice shirt with my Central Development Group logo, just like you. Sure. And, um, you know, so uh, actually today we, uh, we are leaving. Uh, we're going down to the REL conference in Dallas and learn all about memory care. There you so. go. Good. Good stuff, Joe. That's great. 
Um, so thinking about where you're at now, we talked about kind of the future, uh, quitting your job. Is, is there anything that when you look back, whether it was quitting your job, whether it was last month, last year, or 25 years ago, when you think back about all the decisions you've made, things that you've done well, maybe some things that you regret you've done differently, is there any advice that you'd give your younger, former self uh, things that, whether it be in a relationship, whether it be in business, finance, uh, you know, whatever it is, is, is there any advice you'd give your younger former self that our audience can kind of, you know, take and kind of implement in their own lives? Probably the, the one thing that, that I, I still come back to today happened when I was, oh, I don't know, I was 18, 19 years old. I was a baseball jock and I thought I was pretty good. And I was, I was, you know, I was, I was good in high school and I played college ball and I was pretty good in college, but I always had a, a, uh, a passion for the Marine Corps and I wanted to be a Marine and I wanted to be an aviator, um, but I failed the eye test. And so therefore I couldn't be an aviator and the recruiter says, look, your scores are good. You can be a ground engineer, you know, you, you know, go through college, we'll put you through your college and all that other and I thought, you know, I'm going to have somebody telling me where to go and what to do and how to do it. I'm pretty good. Um, don't know that I really, don't know that I really, really want to do that. Long and the short of it is I played college ball, went to a Cardinals camp. They were cutting guys way more better than I was. And that is a regret still to this day that I didn't pursue. So the advice is if you think you want to do something, you just really need to examine it and just go for it. You're young. You know, it's what I tell my boys. You're, you're young and um, just get, you got, you got all kinds of time to work. And so you need to develop whatever is that passion or whatever is that goal or whatever it is that focus it's out there and you may try three or four or five things and it may not be the bomb, but that will get you to where you want to go. Right. So it took me 35 years to get here today and we're not anywhere near where we're headed. And I would tell you, we don't even know where that is, except it's vertical. Yeah. Right. Except it's vertical. <laughs> that, is right. that is great, man. I love that. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, Joe, like I'm 42, right? And I've already been in real estate, um, you know, 14 years. And I got my, you know, knees chopped off underneath me when I was uh, diagnosed with cancer in 2011. Basically, I had to rebuild my entire life, uh, both physically, mentally, financially, all of it. Um, and I think now at 42, like a lot of people would be saying, well, you know, 42, I just got to get to work. You know, I've got, you know, 10 years, I've got 20 years. I, you know, I'm going to work till I'm 63 or 65. The truth is because the advances in medicine and the advances in lifestyle, you know, there's a pretty good chance that, you know, me or my wife are going to live to a hundred. Right. So I still feel like I'm on the young half of my life. And it's really all about perspective, you know? I mean, if you think like, okay, you know, I'm, I've got to make something happen now because I'm only going to work till I'm 65. Well, if you're working and doing something you really love, like there is no exit date. There's just, there's no time to say, well, I'm going to work, 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 work. And on this day, I'm going to retire in my big retirement party. Like the guys that I know they're in real estate, you know, even though they're completely financially independent, they're 65 and 70 and 75 years old, they're still doing deals. They're still raising money. They're still talking to the bank. They're still you know, raising private capital. They're still doing something fun. Maybe they're not working, you know, a super rough, hard 50, 60 hours a week. Maybe they're putting in 10, 15 hours and that's it. And for a lot of people, it depends on your goals, right? Because even I know a lot of investors that just do three or four deals a year and they're make a hundred, 150 a year. And they're only working 10 or 15 hours a week because they're just closing a couple deals and that's the lifestyle they want. They want the freedom to do whatever they want. And so it really is all about perspective, right? Because it, I could say, well, look, I've got to work, 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 50, 60, 80 hours a week. Or like I can be comfortable building a team and maybe making a tick less money 
and have an amazing lifestyle to spend with my wife and kids and things like that. Because I've got all this time to build and enjoy it, build and enjoy it, build and enjoy it, instead of just build, 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 and then retire and then enjoy it. Right? You see, that didn't work out for my parents. It didn't work out for my dad. He worked, 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 retired, and got diagnosed with Parkinson's. My, 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 my buddy Matt, uh, his dad, worked, 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 retired. Five months later, got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, died within a year. Right? So I just don't buy into that. So, Joe, I don't know about you and what your thoughts are on that philosophy, but you know, this business of real estate allows us to work and enjoy, work and enjoy, not work, 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 and then enjoy later. What are your thoughts on that philosophy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's that's that that's true. Um, you know, as I said, I mean, I had a good job, I had a good income, I had all the benefits, I had all the health insurance, I had all that stuff. Um, um, but what this business affords, and I don't look towards retirement, I look towards the future, and I think about the beauty of this business is we can do deals anywhere in the country. We can do deals anywhere in the world. As long as we've got high speed connection and as long as we've got a telephone, we can do anything in there. There's money in California, there's money in Idaho. Um, Cedar has proven there's money in Montana for goodness sakes. Um, so um, there's, I mean, any, this business works anywhere. I mean, we are in central Missouri and, and it's, a, it's a great place because we can bounce out to other markets uh, and, 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 and be in different parts. But I will tell you that I don't, I don't see me ever in retire. I will probably slow down a little bit. Um, um, but at the end of the day, I don't have that date chalked up on the wall to say, I've got three years and 46 days and 13 hours and 12 seconds. Cause I, I just don't think about it like that. I think about, Hmm, where am I going to do another event? And well, maybe we'll just spend a day. I'll go do that event and then maybe we'll spend seven or 10 days checking it out. We went up to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho year before last and hung out up there. Well, Lake Coeur d'Alene, you know, kind of met the retirement um, chart. So we just got to places where, oh, we've been there. Oh yeah, we like that. Well, last a um, uh, few months ago, we went to Flagstaff. So Flagstaff is pretty cool. Um, there are so many places that we have the ability to check out because I don't have to call the boss and say, is it okay if I take off? I'm, I've heard this boss guy can be kind of demanding sometimes, but you know, at the end of the day, he kind of likes hanging out and likes traveling and Barbara loves to travel and you know, she wants to you know, take a trip around the world. I don't know that I want to do that. I might meet her in Italy and ride my bicycle from the tip of Northern Italy to Southern Italy. But, um, you know, that's part of her goal and her dream. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to solidify, you know, trying to do my part of whatever I can do to make that happen. And I could probably ride that ship for three or four weeks, maybe a month. I'll have to get off it though and go somewhere and, go to work for a while. I don't know. We might go, we might go buy something in the Caribbean. Who knows? Yeah, that's fantastic. So Joe, as we, we kind of kind of round third here and head for home and kind of wrap up this interview. Um, you're a, you're a very competitive athlete done a number of Ironmans and triathlons and things like that. Um, tell our audience just a little bit about that, your passion for being athletic and your passion for those kind of things. What, where did you think that passion comes from? And uh, just kind of any final parting shots, words of advice for our audience. Maybe they're watching this interview for the first time. Maybe they're, maybe they're, you know, kind of thinking about their future. Maybe they've never heard of me or you before, but they're thinking, wow, these guys, these guys, this, there's something here. Um, so just talk about that, your passion for life, your passion for sports and any kind of final pieces of advice or words of encouragement for our group. Sure. Uh, I, um, I started this triathlon gig in my mid forties. Um, just got bored in the gym. Was always kind of a gym rat, uh, uh, but just got bored in the gym. It was a winter time and uh, I was in a spin class and um, the, the instructor had, dead, had completed several Ironmen. 
and he looked at me, he goes, man, you're kind of a strong rider. You need to join our triathlon team. I went, triathlon, man, I can't do that. And he goes, oh yeah, you can. And I thought, oh, okay. So anyway, a few more week, weeks went by and he goes, I'm telling you, you need to join our triathlon team. He says, you'll really love it. We've got a great group and good camaraderie. I don't know if I can do triathlon. I mean, heck, I haven't swam since I did the mile swim at Boy Scout camp when I was 12. So anyway, I decided, oh, what the heck? And there's a, there was a group that was going to uh, the Memphis in May triathlon. And that is around a fundraiser that's all about barbecue. And anybody that knows me knows that my last meal on this earth is going to be barbecue and it will come with onion rings and spicy coleslaw. Nice. So uh, I, I left the class, went out, signed up for the, the, the uh, Memphis in May triathlon, jumped in the pool, went down and back and thought I was going to die. And uh, just just started training and getting into it, and and it was a different lifestyle, you know, where it it's not a you know we don't call it diet, we call it nutrition, yeah. because one of the things that triathlon affords you is the ability to eat a lot, and uh, you know, and so I I had completed several um, uh, Olympic distance triathlons and then some halves and. One of the fellows that I did a half with, uh, he goes, man, you need to, you need to do an Ironman. I thought, ah, Ironman, I don't, I don't know. I said, I don't even have a training plan. I don't even know where to start. So I went to, went to work and popped up my email and there was a training plan from one of the guys and he goes, now you have no excuse. Yeah. So we got to that event, looked around, got out of the car and here's all these really fit you know, men and women. And I thought, I have got no business being here doing this. I, I, I don't even know what I'm doing. And he looks at me and he goes, look, you've done the training, right? Yeah. Put in your time, right? You're here, right? Yeah. Just go do the event. So I did and finished my first one and that went to another and another. And um, then I had a new, uh, put a new hip in. So People that say that, oh, I can't do uh, whatever because I got a bad leg. I understand it's a bad leg, but I have a prosthetic hip and I've done three iron men with a prosthetic hip. Doesn't make me a genius, doesn't make me any better than anybody else. But the real testimony is what is the drive and what is the reason? Whether it is athletics or whether it's work, whether it's your family, whether it, what, whatever it is. Um, one of my other sons um, is um, insanely fit. He's a United States Marine. He loves Spartan events. Very, wow. very physical, very physical. And he encouraged me to do a Spartan race with him. I said, okay, Connor, I would love to do that. Just pick one. Don't ever tell one of my overachiever sons to pick something because they pick something kind of like me over the top right. so we went out to lake tahoe and we didn't do a we didn't do a spartan we didn't do a spartan beast we did what was called an ultra spartan beast so you know 26 miles 58 obstacles at lake tahoe 9,000 feet this is something that you know, normal people just don't do but I'm going to the stay focused thing because there were a there were a team of veterans that were there. You know, one of these veterans and I, and I completed this event and these guys are doing exactly the same course that I did. One of them was missing an arm. One of them was missing both legs. Another guy was missing one leg. Another guy was missing both arms. Now, take in mind, they, they, had, they had some team members that were helping them do the obstacles, but they couldn't do. But, and, and then they had um, uh, some support you know, behind them, working with them on their nutrition, carrying an American flag. Okay, that's why we do what we do. And you talk about mesmerizing. I stood there and I wept because of the sacrifice of what these men and women did. So you and I get the privilege of helping others do what we do. So it's not about how much we can make. It's what do we want to make out of our life? And our life is whatever we want to make it. So I would, I would tell my, my parting word is 
find the dream, look at your why, figure out why you want to do whatever it is you want to do. In your case, you're working uh, with the Parkinson's Fund. In my case, I support, I support special athletes. Uh, I support military veterans. Why? Probably because, you know, I'm living vicariously because I chose not to do what they did. And at 58 years old, there's not a day that I go by that I don't remember that I should have done that. I should have done it. And Connor's doing it. Now, whether Connor's doing it because of me or that's something that he wants to do, he's a Marine, he's a college graduate, um, he's, he's building his own business, uh, son Drew, he is an athlete, we train together, we work out together, um, he's building his business, and I get to fund it all because I had taken the jump to do something different. Figure out your why, be different when you make a mistake, and you will, and things go bad, and they will. Uh, what you can't do is not, you can't stop. You can't stop. I say, I tell people that Iron Man comes in three mile increments. You're feeling really strong, and then you turn some hill, and the wind hits you in your face, and you go, Oh crap, what am I doing out here? Why am I doing this? And then you see, you know, some, some fellow that, might ride by you with one leg, but he's still on the same course that I'm doing, right? Or you see somebody that's 70 years old. Okay, well, I lap the guy, but he's out there doing it. He's doing something because either one, he's got something to prove or two, because somebody told him he couldn't do it. So I would look at those people you know, and say, oh, just tell me that I can't do, that is, that is a challenge for me. Tell me I can't do something and I guarantee you that I will do it. Yeah, that is awesome. Awesome, Joe. Well, listen, as we wrap up, I appreciate those final words of encouragement. That is great stuff, man. Um, so for our audience, I always like to give our audience some resources and some tips and stuff like that, just as we kind of wrap up. Uh, so just a couple things. If you enjoyed our interview with Joe, uh, you find this on iTunes or YouTube or wherever you find this, whatever social platform. Uh, if you enjoyed the interview, uh, give us a, a five-star rating. Give us a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the interview, you thought it was terrible, you hated it, still give us a five-star rating and a thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, leave us a comment. So my team will obviously monitor the comments. If you have questions, we'll grab those. We'll answer those when we can. Uh, and then if you know we can feed them back to Joe, Joe will respond to my team and we'll get, we'll get the answers for you. Um, you know, Joe started out with us just buying a simple uh, ebook. That's how he got started with us and is working with us now inside of our coaching program for a couple of years. If you feel like you're kind of stuck in the mud, you know, you're not achieving and not progressing the way you want to, you know, maybe some sort of coaching and mentoring is right for you. Uh, you can always check out our, our website specifically for that, which is joshcantwellcoaching.com. Um, check that out. Go ahead and apply if that's something you think you're interested in. We always do that through an interview process. So when Joe got started with us, it was an interview process. We find out kind of where he is and where he wanted to go, figure out his reasons for wanting that change, uh, and then just talk to him about, hey, this is how we can help you achieve that. This is some of the programs that we have that can get you there. Um, Joe, if there's anybody – uh, you know, that wants to work with you, maybe joint venture with you, maybe be a private lender to you. Is there a, maybe a website that you have or an email that you have that they can reach out to you? Yeah, you bet. I'd love to, um, to visit with anyone. If, if I can uh, just visit, if, if you need some encouragement, you know, give me a call. If, uh, if you want to partner on a deal, we've got, we've got deals and we're always raising private capital. Um, uh, my, uh, my phone number is 573-808-1820. Uh, our office number is 573-442-2727. And we're on the web at um, uh, centraldevelopmentgroup.com. Centraldevelopmentgroup.com. We've got some postings on there. We've got uh, some blog posts on there. Uh, we've got some projects we're doing. We've got projects for sale. We've got some of our passive income stuff. And our marketing team is, is always working on that. And I uh, would, uh, would love to reach out and be able to assist anybody. Uh, and certainly, if they want to joint venture a deal, uh, let's put it together. Sounds great. 
Yeah, my, our, uh, I mentioned this a lot on our podcast. My student, Joe Nemeth, who is actually in my market, uh, he said to me one time, he said, we all do better when we do deals together. So that just resonated with me big time. And so if, uh, you know, highly recommend you guys work with Joe Greaves. If you listen to this and you're interested in doing deals or being a private lender, Joe's a stand-up guy. He's invested money with me and our fund. I've invested money back with him into his deals as one of his private lenders. We're doing deals together. Uh, and, you know, and everybody's, everybody's making more money and the kind of the tide rises all boats, which is, which is awesome. So Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Hope you have a fantastic week. Uh, have a good time at whatever that event is that you're going to as well. Thanks, Josh. All right, guys, listen, that's it for today. Appreciate you being here again. Leave us a rating, leave us a comment question uh, in the reviews area. And we'll talk with all of you very, very soon. Take care.